morning. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good? All the time. Amen. Amen. We are thankful to be here. Uh, we are almost halfway through our our journey this summer. We uh, we left home uh, June first, and our first stop was in Phoenix, and it was 108. Huh. And uh, yeah, that's awful early for 108 yeah. Phoenix. But we ministered in a little town called Baus, Arizona, which is near Quartzsite. Uh, we minister in Glendale at uh, Urban Outreach, which deals with people who are homeless and have uh, drug addiction issues and such. Uh, we ministered uh, two services over in La Junta, Colorado, two in Fowler, Colorado. We sang at a Cowboy Christian Fellowship in Frederick, Colorado. And then we're here this weekend. Next weekend we'll be in Fruta, Colorado, then Rifle, Colorado, then Dove Creek, Colorado. And then we've got one opening on the, uh, the 24th that we're still praying about and see what God wants us to do uh, to do with that. But, uh, but we've driven uh, already, I think, over 5,000 miles. Uh, so, um, you know, add it up how much it costs in fuel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, God's taking care of us every step of the way. <coughs> And that's the thing, yeah. is, you know, we, we step out in faith when we do this. We don't do this knowing that, oh, we're going to go out there, you know, every, you know, we step out in faith. Amen. Knowing that God takes care of everything. Yeah. He yeah. takes care of it all. He provides us, a, I mean, a lot of these places we go to, like here, this is like coming home. Yeah. You know, coming here, you know, it, it, it's family here, you know. Yeah, amen. And, uh, you know, we, we, we love it. We, we love it, and, and so a, a lot of it, there, there, there's, a, there's a reason we love coming out here, because we love ministering, and that's what we're called to do, but man, we miss family. Yeah. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and it, it, it's great. It's great to be out here. I just want to remind you, I do have some CDs back there. Um, you know, if you, if you bought one already, buy another one and give it away. Yeah. Give it to somebody. <laughs> Uh, because, uh, you know, sometimes you can reach people through music more than you can reach someone through a, a the spoken word. Yeah. So, uh, so, you know, use that. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. Or if you go to your iPhones or iPads, just click Ezekiel 37, <laughs> you know. Uh, amen. I'm going to take this down. I'm going to hold this because I have a tendency to move around. And if you're broadcasting, I'm going to make sure it can be heard. Ezekiel 37. This is a familiar passage um, in the Bible, and uh, it's, it's become one of my favorite passages. Ezekiel 37. I still hear a page is turning. We're, on, we're, we're waiting on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Old Testament one. Yeah. yeah so, uh, <laughs> amen. Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which is full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause bread to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring upon you, and bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone, and when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet in exceeding great army. Let's Amen. go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you this morning, and we thank you, God, for your presence, which we felt here this morning. We ask your anointing, Lord, upon your word. Lord, anoint our ears to hear what the Spirit would say to us. Anoint our hearts, Lord, to be open and receptive to your word. Anoint our eyes, Lord, to see to the spiritual realm. And anoint my mouth to proclaim your word with boldness and power. Be with us now, dear God, and we thank you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We, Nancy and I, we love to take hikes. And we've been out on hikes before, and we've come across dry bones. 
You, know, you get out in some of those arid, desert-like climate, and boy, those bones dry out real quick, don't they? Real quick. But here, the Lord and the Spirit took Ezekiel out into this valley. And when he looked in the valley, it was full of these dry bones. Now imagine looking out over a valley, and it is just chug full of dry bones in that valley. And God asked Ezekiel something that, that many times, you know, we think, well, it's a common sense type of question. Ezekiel, can these bones live? You know, and when you look at them, you look at those bones, you're like, there is no way. They're dried out. There's nothing in them. They're, you know, it's probably somebody's arm bone is there, his leg bone is there, you know. But these bones are all dried out. And Ezekiel, he said, God, you know. Yeah. You know if they can live or not. And God said, now, Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy to the bones. I want you to do this. I want you to say to the bones, bones come together. Hear what the Lord, Lord is saying. You bones come together and flesh come upon the bones. And, you know, and bones basically start forming again. And Ezekiel prophesied to them. And there was a noise and a shaking. And all of a sudden, I, I could imagine in my mind, all of a sudden, here comes a bone over here, over to here. And joins up. And here comes finger bones start joining up. Next thing you know, you've got a full skeleton. And then Ezekiel looks and sinew, muscle, and tendons start coming up on the bones. And then the flesh comes and covers him. And Ezekiel said, and there was all basically all of these bodies in this valley, but they weren't alive. Right. They weren't alive. And he said, the Lord said to Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy to the wind. And I want you to tell the wind, come wind, come and breathe into these bodies. Breathe life into these bodies. And Ezekiel prophesied it. And, and they stood up, it says, on their feet, an exceeding great army. Amen. But notice that, that God asked Ezekiel to do this. Right. God could have spoken it himself. He could have said to the bones, come to life. He could have said all that. But God said, Ezekiel, I want you to do this. You know, many times in our lives, we go through situations where we feel like we're dry bones. Right. Many times in our lives, we feel that way. But let me tell you, whenever we speak the word of the Lord, and we speak that breath to come into us, when we speak that breath of, of life from God, it can change things. Amen. I tell you, we came through a hard time with COVID. Yeah. We came through a very rough time. But let me tell you, the breath of God is still there to bring Amen. life into yeah. people. Yeah. We might feel dried out. We might feel like that there's no hope. We might feel like that we can't go on. But let me tell you, the Holy Spirit of God is here to bring Amen. life into yes. yes. You just need to speak the word yeah. like Ezekiel spoke. You know, God, I'm dry. God, I feel dried out. Both the Holy Spirit come and breathe life into me again. Let me tell you, folks, we need the Holy Spirit of yeah. God active in our lives. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit of God active in our churches. Yes. We need Him active in us because yeah. many times we do get dried out. Many times that oil does leak out a little bit and we need a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I pray every day, God, fill me afresh and anew with the Holy Spirit Amen. because we need it. Every day. Yes. We need him every day. In John chapter 20, it says, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Here it's talking about Jesus. Jesus breathed on his disciples. I don't know how it is. He might have looked at them and he might have gone... <laughs> on them all. But he says, receive the Holy yeah. Ghost. Yeah. Let me tell you, church, we need churches that are on fire. Amen. Yeah. We need yeah. Christians that are yeah. on fire. For Amen. God. We need yeah. Christians that are filled with the yeah. Holy Ghost. Not just a little bit of the Holy Ghost. No. Not just, but they're filled yeah. with the Holy Ghost. Amen. We live in a world today that's out there and they celebrated yeah. pride this yeah. month. Let me tell you, I'm proud I'm a Christian. Amen. I'm proud I'm filled yeah. with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm proud I speak in tongues. Yes. But let me tell you, God is looking for more people like yes, that. Yes, yes. God's yes. looking for people. Let me tell you, when you don't have the Holy Spirit working and active in your life, you feel like that valley of dry right. bones. Right. Oh, we need him active in our Amen. lives. Amen. Yes. We need him active. There was an American that was an Englishman went to view Niagara Falls. You guys were at Niagara yeah. Falls recently. <laughs> 
They went to view Niagara Falls and the Whirlpool Rapids. And the Americans said to the Englishmen, come and I'll show you the greatest unused power in the world. And they had taken him to the foot of the falls. He said, there, he said, there is the greatest unused power in the world. And the Englishman looked at him and he says, no, that's not so, my brother. He said, the greatest unused power in the world is the Holy Spirit yeah, yeah. of the living God. Amen. Oh, folks, it's there for us. He's there for us. Yes. All we have to do is call. Amen. All we have to do is ask. All we have to do is like Ezekiel did here. Come, yes. breathe. Breathe into me. Amen. The greatest unused power is that yeah. Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you, you get a church that's on fire for God. You get a church that's on fire and the Spirit is moving. You got a church that can change a community. Oh, yeah. You got a yeah. church that can change Amen. a town. You got a church where a drunk walks in yeah. off the street and he walks out drunk in the Spirit Amen. of God. You got a church where people come in in wheelchairs yeah. and they go out walking and we are yeah. praising yeah. God. Oh, church. That's what God is looking for. Yes, amen. And that can be this church right here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm reminded of a, of a, of a story of a church that had, had a wonderful service. They had a great service, and they went and they locked, they locked the doors of the church, and they, and they were all heading home. And no sooner did the pastor get home than he got a phone call, and he said, Pastor, something's going on at the church. And he's like, well, what? He said, the lights are on. And there's music, glorious music coming from the church. And the pastor thought, well, somebody's broken into the church. And he went down to the church and he stood outside and looked. And sure enough, there were lights on in the church. And there was music playing in the church. And the pastor went and he opened the door and the lights went off and the music stopped. You see, God wasn't done yet. Yeah, yeah. God wasn't done. Too many times we get in a hurry. Yeah. Too many times we say, well, the food's waiting over there. We better hurry <laughs> and get over there and eat. Our church, let me tell you, God says, no, no, no. Listen, I've got plans. Amen. God says, I have an agenda. Yeah. Listen to my agenda. Amen. Listen, don't listen to your stomach growl. <laughs> listen to my agenda. Amen. Preach, Our brother. Church, yes. we, were, we were at a church. Uh, I was a music pastor at a church. And uh, we, uh, we had a glorious service. We were singing. We were worshiping God. I was singing Healing Rain. That old Michael W. Smith yes. song. Healing Rain is coming down. And all of a sudden, we could hear on the roof of the building, rain starting to fall down. And all of a sudden, the spirit fell in that place. And my drummer looked at me, and he said, I've got, I've got raindrops on my arms, but there's no leaking anywhere in here. And all of a sudden, we started looking, and it was like a cloud coming into the place. Wow. And the spirit of God fell on that place. And there was a, a pastor came in later, and he looked around the sanctuary, and he he said, have you guys been lighting candles in here? And they're like, no, why? He said, because there's a cloud in this place. Oh, amen. Oh, church, yeah. let me tell you, we need that Shekinah yes. glory yes. of God amen. and visit us. We need, God needs Christians that yeah. are just sitting back, but those that are fired up amen. and ready to go. Yeah. I remember yeah. reminded of Peter and John when they raised the man at the gate, beautiful, yeah. and when they were told by the, the Sanhedrin, don't you talk about Jesus anymore. <laughs> don't you go tell others about Jesus. Do you remember they went back with the other apostles and they got down and they prayed and they said, Lord, God, you see what they're doing yeah. to us. And he said this. He said, now give us more boldness Amen. so we yeah. can go out yeah. and tell others about Amen. Jesus. Oh, church, God is looking for those who will say, yeah. give me more boldness. Amen. God, Amen. God I'm not satisfied. No. God, I want more. Amen. Oh, church, we need more oh, yes. of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The greatest unused power in the world yeah. is the Holy Spirit yes. of God. Oh, church, I'm reminded of a dream I had a few years back where I went into a church, and it was a beautiful valley. <coughs> Excuse me. And I went into this church, and when I walked into the church, there were no lights in the church. There was no power in the church. They had all sorts of computer systems and all sorts of, of fancy stuff in there, but there was no power in the church. And I looked out the window of the church, and I could see a stream running down from the mountains of that church. 
And I looked at the congregation and I said, why haven't you tapped into the stream? Yeah. Yeah. Why haven't you put a turbine over there and drawn power from that stream? Because you see, you can not just power the church, but you can power the whole valley yeah. with what comes off that stream. Church, let me tell you, there's many churches today. The stream of God is going right by them. The power of God is going right by them. And what they need to do is to tie into yeah. the power. Amen, so amen. They need yeah. to tie into that power source. My iPad won't charge itself yeah. unless I tie into the right. power amen. source. Amen. Our church, there's a power source, the Holy Spirit of God, that we need to tie into. Amen, that. yeah. Oh, I don't think, don't think that when you tie into the Holy Spirit, you know, there's so many people out there that's afraid. They're afraid of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. They're afraid. If, if, if I let the Holy Spirit have his way, he might make me go to Africa. <laughs> he, he, he might make me be nice to my neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> he might make me pay my tithe. Yeah. Oh, church, let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Yes. But he's important. Yeah. How important is the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts? J uh, G Jesus said, but you shall receive what? Power. Power. Do you feel powerless? Do you feel like, why are they getting the blessing and I'm not? Why is God moving in their life and I'm not? And he's not in mine? But you shall receive power. Yes. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. And why do we have this power? So we can get goosebumps? No. So we can go running the pews? No. He goes on to say, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come up on you, and ye shall be witnesses. Yes. Ye shall be witnesses unto me. Thank you. That's why we have the Holy Spirit, so that we can be witnesses for God. Yes, amen. You see, all this month, all across the year, there, there have been marches. There have been rallies. All these, these, these pride rallies and pride marches. Oh, church, we need, I'm proud to be a Christian, Mark. Amen. We need, I'm proud to be a child of God, Mark. We need to be the kind of people that's not afraid to go into a grocery store. And when someone says, can you pray for me? We say, well, let's pray right now. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Or yeah. we'll go to a gas station yeah. and have prayer at a gas station. Amen. Or go down the streets and instead of having some type of other music play, crank up the gospel music yeah. and blow the windows down. <laughs> let's shake some mirrors that way. Yeah. You see, God is looking for people who are not ashamed of him, who are not ashamed of the gospel, but who's, who's willing to go out and let the spirit shine through yeah them. amen yeah when we left here last year i think it was when we left yeah we went over to grand junction fruita area and we went to a mexican restaurant there how many of y'all like mexican food oh yeah, yeah. i love it <laughs> we went to a mexican restaurant over there and nancy and i were sitting at this table and across from us was a gentleman sitting over there and they brought him out this real purdy drink <laughs> that, that's a Kentucky word, P-U-R-D-Y. Yeah, yeah, purdy. Yep. It was purdy. <laughs> and it was a big drink, and they sat it down there, and I looked over at it, and I said, boy, that's a purdy drink. And he looked at me, and, and his voice was all gravelly. He said, well, that's a margarita. And I said, I said well, it's purdy anyway. Yeah. <laughs> he said, and he said, do you, do you drink alcohol? Do you guys drink? I'm like, no, I'm a minister. I don't. We don't drink it, you know. Uh, you know, my wife and I were out here, we're evangelizing and all that. He got up from his table and he walked over to ours. And he stood there and he said, I hate to say it, but I used to go to church. I used to be a Christian. I used to sing in church. And he's saying it this whole time with his gravelly, real gravelly voice. And he said, but I left church. And when I left church, I developed polyps oh. on my vocal cords. And now this is the best I can do. And we stood there in the middle of that Mexican restaurant. And I said, brother, I said, I'm going to pray for you. Amen. And we stood up. Now all this activity going on around us. And we stood up with tears coming down. Stood up in that restaurant and prayed for him. Yeah. He was so touched. He went back to his table. I never saw him touch the margarita. 
And I went out to my car and I got some CDs. I gave him the CDs. I gave him my card. I said, there's my phone number. There's my email. If you need, you call me. Yeah. You call me. And I said, when we go back to Fruita next year, I said, I want to see you. And I want to hear a beautiful voice coming out. Yeah. Amen. You yeah. see, folks, that's the Holy Spirit yeah. of God right. working through somebody. Amen. Because there's a world out there that's lost and dying and on their way to a devil's hell. And unless we, who are empowered with the Spirit of God, go out and be the witnesses that we're supposed to be. Let me tell you, NBC's not going to lead them to the Lord. CNN isn't going to do it. ABC, CBS, they're not going to go out and tell people, you need to get saved. You know, the Lord is, you're not going to hear, where are they going to, they're going to hear from us. Yes, amen. They're going to hear from us. Now, sometimes through our word, sometimes through our song, yeah. sometimes through our actions. Yes, amen. But they need to see yeah. Jesus in us. Yeah, amen. And yeah. We, if, if they can parade around out there their sin, we can parade around our God. Amen. Yeah. And we can let the world know that Jesus cares about them. Yeah. Amen. That Jesus loves them. How important is the Holy Spirit in our life? Acts 19 says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. How important is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is so important that Paul went up to some of John's disciples and said, Have you received the Holy Ghost? You know, you you, you follow John, you follow the teachings, but you need the Holy Ghost in your life, too. You need the Holy Ghost working in your life. That's how how important it's so important that Paul spoke to them about the Holy Ghost. So important that Peter was nothing more than a reed waving in the wind yeah. before Pentecost. But after Pentecost preached a sermon and brought thousands yeah. to yeah. the Lord. A man that when the Holy Ghost finally got a hold of him, they said they would line people in the street in hopes that his shadow would touch them. Right. And his shadow would heal those people. That's how important the Holy Ghost yeah. is. The Holy Ghost is so important that there wouldn't be a book of Acts without the Holy Ghost. Amen. As a matter of fact, Acts could be reading the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, so important that John received the book of Revelation when he was in the Spirit on the Lord's yeah. day. Amen. Oh, how different would our church services be if we were truly in the Spirit on the Lord's day? Oh, amen. How different yeah. would our world community we would be if we stayed in the spirit oh, on the yes. Lord's day. Yes, yes. Oh, so important that Joel prophesied. Joel said, it shall come to pass in the last day that I will pour out my spirit upon some people. No, no, all people. Upon all flesh. Yeah. And he said, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Now listen, sons and daughters, your old men shall dream dreams. That must be me because I dream dreams. Amen. <laughs> Your young men shall see visions, and upon your servants and your handmaidens in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Amen. In other words, everybody. Yes. Don't think about well, well, the Holy Spirit's for him, but it's yeah. not for me. It's for you too. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit's for everybody. Yes. And let me tell you, church, we need him acting yes, we in do. our lives. When Joel prophesied this, he said, Now this. You know, this is going to come to pass. This is going to happen. Oh, let me tell you, church. You know, it, 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 the Holy Spirit wants to move so bad in churches. Yet in so many churches today, they print in the bulletins when you stand, when you sit, what song you're going to sing, when you raise your hands. Oh, church, let me tell you, we need the Holy Spirit. To oh, be amen. Active in our churches. Yeah. We need him moving amongst the people. Yeah. We need the Holy Spirit just to have his way in our midst. Oh, absolutely. Uh, see, we were talking this morning. I was raised old time holiness. Yeah. I was raised, I, I, I was brought up Pentecostal. So I, I, I know when I was a, when I was young, we would go to church. We would go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night. Then we had youth on Tuesday night. We had a midweek service. And then we had prayer service, I think it was right. on Friday. And then we had a Saturday night service. 
And usually on the sound on the on the evening services, we get started around seven. The preacher get up to preach around nine. Oh, that, that that's too long of a service. <laughs> He'd get up to preach around nine. We'd be fortunate if he preached an hour. Because you know how long-winded some preachers can be. <laughs> he'd get you know, he'd preached, and then probably, but but the, but we didn't really have church till the preacher was done, Amen. and people started yeah. gathering around the altars yeah. and praying and seeking God and seeking the Holy Spirit upon. Him. My mom used to say, "Paul, grab hold of the horns of the altar <laughs> and don't let go till God blesses you." Amen. But there's so many yeah. times we come up to the altar and we pray a little prayer, and then we get up and leave before God has a chance to really move on. Yeah, that's true. That's true. There's an old-fashioned word called tarry. Yeah. Can we tarry a little while? Oh, but if I tarry too long, you know, the Baptist will beat us over <laughs> the cafeteria. If I tarry too long, oh, you know, the store will close. Oh, what's more important, folks? What's more important? Getting re-energized here. Yes. Amen. You see, that's, that's what's important. Yes. Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica. He said, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And then he goes on to say, quench not the spirit. Yes, yes. Despise not prophesy. Yes. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Amen. You see, church, Paul was saying here, he's, he's like, when the spirit moves, let the spirit move. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't get in his way. Don't try to control. Oh, I remember uh, there was a pastor I had when I was a, a, a child. Brother O.A. Morgan. He was about this tall. <laughs> in, on a good day, he was about that tall. But that man would walk down the streets of Newport, drunk in the spirit, praying for the town. Because he had such a burden for the city. They said that he would be walking along. And he would grab hold of telephone poles. And he would stand there. And he would cry. Oh God save this city. Yeah. God save the people here. Oh, he, I remember one service we were in. He got up and he stood there. And the spirit was moving. And he said church. I don't want to move. Because the spirit is moving here. Yeah. Oh, church, that's, that's what God is looking for. People yeah. who has the burden for the community. Amen. People who has the burden for the lost. People who's willing to grab that telephone pole and hold on and pray God save them. God save them. Oh, church, we need the spirit of God. Oh, amen. amen. Yes. We need the spirit of God working in yeah. our churches. You see, God brought it to my attention a few months back. That's why that song, They Need Jesus, has become so important to me. Yeah. So I wrote that song back in 2002 for a time such as this. Right. Amen. Because God brought to my attention about people that live out of the back of their cars. Right. They live in deserts. They live in tents. We passed some, didn't we, Nance, when we were out in Bows. Over a hundred degrees that they're living out there. At times they say that there could be as few as a million, maybe as many as three million people like that. And the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit spoke, spoke to me and said, who's ministering to them? Right. Who's ministering to those people? And I said, God, if you want me to do it, I'll do it. Amen. Yeah. I'll do it, God. You see, folks, all around us, there's people lost. Yes. Where we work, in our schools, yeah. at the gas station, where we shop, in our families, yeah. people who are lost. Yes. And who's going to reach them? What's up to the pastor to reach them? No, no. Shepherds don't produce sheep. No. Sheep. Produce sheep. Amen. Yeah. The shepherd takes care of the sheep. Yeah. The shepherd feeds the sheep. Yeah. But it's the sheep that produce sheep. Amen. Because you can go to places that pastor can't. Right. You can talk to people that he can't. You shall receive power. Yeah. 
to go do that. Amen. Don't say, well, I, I can't talk. I can't speak. I, you know, I stutter. I remember somebody else in the Bible who said I stutter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God said, well, let your brother talk for you. <laughs> but if you read the Bible, Aaron didn't speak. Moses no, spoke. no, yeah. Well, what sign am I going to give him? <laughs> God, I can't go in there empty-handed. And God said, what have you got in your hand? I got a stick. Well, I can use that stick. Amen. Yeah. And God looks at the church today and he says, what have you got in your hand? Yeah. What have you got? Because I can use that. Yes. Amen. I can use that. Yeah. I can use that to turn a Pharaoh's heart. I can use that to turn a community around. I can use that to change a family. I can use whatever you have. Just be willing to give it to me. Amen. Just be willing to let it be used. Yeah. You see, church, God is looking for people who are not ashamed of the gospel, who's not ashamed to, to say, you know what? I talk in tongues. <laughs> Amen. I'm a holy roller. Yeah. No, I don't roll as much as I used to. I'm getting a little old. <laughs> You swing from chandeliers? I ain't done it yet. Yeah. But if the Spirit directs me, look out. Have you walked the back of pews? No, nope, I haven't walked the back of pews, but I still don't. God is looking for people who's not ashamed Amen. of the gospel. Yeah. Who's not ashamed of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need Christians, we need churches on fire with the power of God. Absolutely. Now more than ever. Yes, I because agree. Because of the world we live in. Amen. Look at the riots that are taking yeah. place. Because they can't kill a baby. Right. Oh my, what kind of world we live in. Where people can parade around half naked on the streets. Where someone can dress up in drag and go into schools. And they say it's educational. We need churches on fire. Yes. We need Christians on fire. Absolutely. We need Christians that are filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. yes, yes. In other words, we need an exceeding great army. Yeah. That's what was raised up out of that battle. Amen. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Brother Paul, I feel like I feel like those bones dried out. Life has got me down. Things have happened. I just don't know. I feel like those bones. Let God breathe life into you. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, 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 you feel like I've just struggled so much. Let God breathe into you. Let the Holy Spirit come and do a work in you. Amen. Yeah. Church, we've got to realize that time is running out. And there are people out there lost and dying. Yes. And we've got to reach them. Yeah. And if we don't, who will? Who will? Can we stand this morning? Yes.